what this new email story is about. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Anthony Weiner. There is no case. These are not the hallmarks of a responsible investigation. I have to give the FBI credit. It took a lot of guts. One U.S. senator's shocking comments caught on tape. A little bit shocked at that. I didn't have to pull that. This is one of those make or break moments. To all Americans, I say it is time for real leadership. It truly is in your head. Come around. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your new day. Up first, a blatant double standard. That's what the Clinton campaign calls the FBI's surprise announcement of that probe into Huma Abedin's emails. Clinton says, quote, there's no case here, while the FBI director is digging in on his decision. What a difference a day makes. Yesterday was all about the emails. Now, Donald Trump's campaign's got problems, new problems. Okay, he didn't pay his taxes, but how did he get around paying his taxes? The New York Times says maybe he did it in a way that was cheating. New reports. There are also these multiple uncorroborated reports about his campaign's potential links to Russia and what the FBI may know about that, but not saying. We're only a week away from the election. We have it all covered. Let's begin with CNN Justice correspondent Evan Perez. Evan. Good morning, Chris. Well, the big question today remains, will the FBI be able to provide more information about what it's finding so far in this investigation of Huma Abedin's recently discovered emails? FBI Director James Comey has told officials that at this point he doesn't plan to provide partial updates and that it's unlikely that his investigators can complete their work before Election Day. A team of investigators has begun its work to dig through these thousands of emails which were found on a computer belonging to Huma Abedin's husband, uh, former Congressman Anthony Weiner. Abedin's attorney says she has no idea how her emails ended up on this computer. And at this point, the FBI's uh, forensics experts are still trying to figure out how they got there. Comey's been under attack, including from all three most recent attorneys general in the Bush and Obama administration. All three are finding fault with Comey's handling of the Clinton investigation, and particularly for commenting on the latest Abedin email discovery just days before an election. Comey's current boss, however, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, for the first time met briefly with him yesterday on the sidelines of a national security meeting. Lynch, as you remember, was opposed to Comey sending his letter to Congress last Friday, but we're told that the conversation yesterday was a friendly chat between two officials who are under a great deal of scrutiny over this Clinton investigation. Chris? All right, Evan, thank you very much. The Clinton campaign is going directly at the FBI's chief, and they say this is a blatant Dumble standard. He'll talk about the emails when he doesn't have the underlying proof, but he won't talk about any investigations about Donald Trump. For that, we have Phil Mattingly, live in Chappaqua, New York. Of course, that's where Hillary Clinton lives. What do you have? Well, Chris, you nailed it. It is an escalation right now. It started with shock. The Clinton campaign obviously had no idea this was coming when that letter was sent to Capitol Hill on Friday. But slowly, over the course of the last three or four days, you've seen an escalation of attacks, a clear effort by the Clinton campaign to undercut what that letter means. It's not an effort we're going to see slow down anytime soon. There is no case here. Hillary Clinton and her campaign firing back at FBI Director James Comey, slamming his decision to notify Congress of a new investigation into thousands of emails found on a computer belonging to the estranged husband of a top Clinton aide, Huma Abedin. Clinton's campaign turning the tables on Comey. It's impossible to view this as anything less than a blatant double standard. Seizing on reports that Comey refused to publicly comment on potential ties between Donald Trump's campaign and Russia. On Sunday, Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid accused Comey of sitting on, quote, explosive information. Trump's Russia connections without offering proof. CNN cannot corroborate any of these reports. But U.S. officials do tell CNN that Russia is behind hacks that could potentially... ...to make the move that he made in light of the kind of opposition he had. Comey has only said the emails found on disgraced Congressman Anthony Weiner's computer, quote, appear to be pertinent to the now-closed Clinton private server investigation. We can be sure that what is in those emails is absolutely devastating. And I think we're going to find out, by the way, for the first time. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Anthony Weiner. Abedin's attorneys responding, 
saying in a statement, quote, from the beginning, Ms. Abedin has complied fully and voluntarily with State Department and law enforcement requests, and reiterating, Abedin only learned of the emails on Wiener's computer on Friday from the press. Clinton continuing to apologize for her private email server, but issuing a challenge to investigators. I'm not making excuses. I've said it was a mistake and I regret it. By all means, uh, they should look at them. And I am sure they will reach the same conclusion they did when they looked at my emails for the last year. All of this as the New York Times obtains documents that they say show Trump potentially has escaped tens of millions of dollars in federal personal income taxes in the 1990s by using a tax avoidance maneuver later outlawed by Congress. Trump's campaign responding to the report in a statement saying, quote, any tax experts that you have consulted are engaged in pure speculation. There is no news here. So, Allison, obviously the big question, seven days out, what is the state of play of this race after this crazy last four or five days? Well, to get a sense of things, look at where the candidates and their surrogates are. Donald Trump today in Pennsylvania for a very big speech with his running mate Mike Pence on Obamacare, then going to Wisconsin. Hillary Clinton, she's in battleground Florida. President Obama, Ohio. Vice President Biden, North Carolina. What does all that mean? Donald Trump's going to blue states, states with a clear Democratic advantage, basically saying he has to flip these states, almost pull off an upset if he wants to win. Hillary Clinton and her surrogates in battlegrounds. Battlegrounds where if she just wins one of those three, she likely locks up the White House. So that, at least as of now, that's your state of play, Allison. Okay, Phil, thanks so much for updating us on that. We want to bring in now South Carolina Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy. He was chairman of the House Select Committee on Benghazi, which discovered, first discovered that Clinton used a private email server. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, how are you? Doing well. Congressman, explain why you are comfortable with Director Comey releasing word to Congress that there is this new wrinkle in the investigation involving Huma Abedin's emails before knowing if there's any there there. Well, I think there are two reasons. Number one, Allison, let's just concede being a police officer and a prosecutor is a lonely and tough job and unusual facts make for some pretty tough conclusions, but he did tell Congress in July that the investigation had been completed and he had determined that she didn't have specific intent to commit a crime. So I think he felt the need to supplement the record. Remember, John Koskinen is being investigated for potential impeachment for failing to supplement the record and update Congress. So I think, number one, you take him at his word that he wanted to supplement the record, but number two, uh, let's assume, arguendo, that Secretary Clinton today were to say to a rally, all of this is in the rearview mirror, I've been investigated, all of my aides have been investigated, there's nothing here. Well, if Comey knows that there is potentially new information that may impact the investigation, then what she's saying is not true. So under, uh, under the general theory that, that the public should be given the information right. and then they can sort it out, I, my guess is he, he wanted us to know that there was new potentially relevant information right before knowing if it is relevant i mean you know you've heard lots of legal experts say that it just breaks with protocol him coming forward before knowing if there's relevant information yeah i, I wish i had a nickel for every time i asked the media not to report the facts of one of my murder trials on the morning of jury selection and they did it anyway under a theory that the public has a right to know i wish the president had not prejudged the investigation when he did so. I wish Loretta Lynch had not met with Bill Clinton on the tarmac. So I, I wish a lot of things had not happened in this case. Again, this is an unusual fact pattern which leads to unusual conclusions. Okay, so in terms of the public's right to know, do you share that same measure about whether or not the FBI should talk about any investigation they have into Donald Trump's campaign's ties to Russia? Well, as a general rule, the Bureau does not confirm or deny the existence of an investigation, although that rule uh, lately has been honored more in its breach. <laughs> so if you want the Bureau to update the public about a, an investigation into Mr. Trump, then they're also going to need to update the public about the Clinton Foundation investigation, if one exists. But remember, there's a referral on Secretary Clinton's perjury 
Uh, there's an allegation that she committed perjury. Yeah. There was a referral letter sent by Chairman Goodlatte and Chaffetz. They have not updated Congress on that. I don't view his letter as an update on the facts of the investigation. I view it as a notice document. I, we want, I want you to know my previous testimony uh, has changed. The matter is still open. That's how I viewed the letter. Well, one of your colleagues on the House Oversight Committee says that you and your Republican colleagues are basically just accepting this double standard, that you do want the update on Hillary Clinton's emails, but you're not pressing the FBI for any update that could be, of course, wildly relevant to the presidential race if Donald Trump's campaign had some sort of connection to Russia. Well, I'm sure my colleague on oversight was not referring to me because maybe I'm a universe of one. I don't want an update on, on the status of the email investigation. I'm not entitled to an update on the status of the email investigation. I used to work for the Department of Justice. They should not be discussing the facts of an investigation until the investigation is over. Now, if my colleague meant that Comey should have kept it a secret that they had potentially hundreds of thousands of new emails, uh, I just find that interesting. A couple of months ago, they thought Jim Comey was the second coming of Christ, and a couple of months later, now they think that he should be investigated for violation of the Hatch Act. I don't like relativism, whether it exists on my side of the aisle or their side of the aisle. I think the same rules ought to apply. This is a very difficult, unusual fact pattern. But, Allison, it is difficult and unusual because of decisions made by people not named Jim Comey. I mean, Secretary Clinton is the reason you and I are having this conversation, not Jim Comey. So, Congressman, if Hillary Clinton were to win the race a week from now, should the American public and voters expect years and years of more investigations and committee hearings into things that you believe are wrongdoing? Uh, it depends. Um, Congress um, does not have jurisdiction, and frankly, we are terrible at investigating potential crimes. But the legislative branch does have an obligation to provide oversight, and part of that oversight, frankly, includes the Department of Justice. I mean, the Department of Justice is funded by Congress, so we should provide oversight after things have happened, just like we should provide oversight over the CIA and the State Department. But it's not our job to investigate potential criminality. We're bad at it, and even if we found evidence of a crime, there's nothing we can do about it. That's an executive branch function. So it, it, it kind of depends upon the nature of the investigation and what our motive and intent and purpose is. Congressman Trey Gowdy, thanks so much for joining us on New Day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Chris. All right, let's get the other side with Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland. He's a Hillary Clinton supporter. It depends, Senator. Trey Gowdy giving uh, a good description of the limitations of the House in terms of investigating crimes, but he didn't say there would be no hearings on a then-president-elect or President uh, Hillary Clinton. What does that tell you? Well, Chris, we've already seen that the House of Representatives has had more and more investigations concerning Secretary Clinton. So uh, it's hard to predict what they'll do, but I would like to think that they would uh, be objective and that uh, they would only do an investigation if there was a reason to. But that has not been the practice in the past. So let's go from what could happen in the future to what's going on right now. Uh, Gowdy and other Republicans are making a very obvious case about what Jim Comey just did. He owed it to Congress. He said he would tell them if anything changed, and that's why he wrote the letter. They just took it as a status change, nothing more. Obviously, Donald Trump uh, takes it as a hell of a lot more than that, but they're distinguishing themselves from him. What do you say? Well, here's the situation. Uh, we, uh, information was discovered uh, the, uh, the FBI does not know whether it's relevant to Secretary Clinton or not. They haven't reviewed the emails. Uh, there is no indication that there's anything new that would warrant uh, the, this type of uh, scrutiny, but they need to look at it. There's a reason why close to election, when you have that type of information that does not point to an active, investig uh, active concern, that you don't make that information public. You hold off because of the impact it could have on the elections. I, I think Director Comey, uh, when he released that, uh, should have anticipated that Donald Trump and others would then say, use that and draw conclusions, conclusions that have no merit whatsoever in the information that the FBI has. Do you it's think... Part of a strategy... Do you think that he... Part of a strategy, I think... 
do you think, Senator, do you think that the FBI director should come out with more information about the case before the end of the election? Do you think that he should do an expedited review, or do you think that's even possible? The suggestion seems that he is not inclined to do so. Well, first, I, I don't think he should have put the, sent that notice to Congress. Secondly, now that he's done that, yes, I think it's important that that information be made more public so the public can, uh, can draw conclusions rather than having Donald Trump and others draw their own conclusions that just are without any merit to the information that's available. The criticism so is... To, to make more public... The criticism is... You loved him when he was on your side. Now he seems to be doing something that could help the other side, so you don't like him. You're having it both ways. Well, quite frankly, I, I would like to see investigations done out the, of the spotlight of the public. But uh, Director Comey was the one who ma made his decisions. Uh, the fact that he closed the investigation, that is public. The fact that there's more information now that may be relevant and may not be relevant, that needs to be investigated before public comments are made. So I think he, he look, he's a good person. He made a bad judgment here. And uh, you, you see how it's being spun in an effort, I think, a strategy to deal with some of the Clinton support supporters to say, well, maybe there's a question here, you, you, you need not come up the vote. I think it has something to do with suppression uh, of the voter turnout. People get depressed about this election. Uh, and it's been used. And uh, uh, Director Comey fell into this trap. Well, you've got to be careful about that, right? Because if he fell into a trap of others, then that's, as you say, maybe a bad judgment. If you say that he is part of that trap, then that would no, go to the hatch act. The and that's what Harry Reid was saying. No, no. has crashed with a transit bus, killing at least three people. We do not know if any children were on the school bus at the time or which bus the victims were on. But you can see it was a terrible accident. Investigators are on scene trying to figure out what led to this crash so of course we are working on getting much more information for you we will bring it to you as soon as we have it <sighs> all right north carolina is big and in play in this election and it's also now the focus of a really ugly moment senator richard burr apologizing but what did he say that deserved an apology put it this way it involved having a bullseye on hillary clinton next